gonna view that holy city one of these days, you know I'm, I'm gonna view that holy city one of these days, hallelujah, I'm gonna view that holy View that holy city one of these days. You know that I'm gonna view that holy city one of these days. Hallelujah! I'm gonna view that holy city one of these days. Hallelujah! I'm gonna view that holy city one of these days. One of these days. Well now I'm gonna sing and never get tired one of these days. You know that I'm gonna sing and never get tired one of these days. Hallelujah! I'm gonna. Shout and never get tired one of these days. You know that I'm, I'm gonna shout and never get tired one of these days. Hallelujah! I'm gonna shout and never get tired. Shout and never get tired one of these days. One of these days. Well now I'm gonna shout my troubles over one of these days. You know that I'm, I'm gonna shout my troubles over no one more troubles over. King Jesus for myself one of these days. I'm gonna see King Jesus for myself. Well, now I'm gonna see King Jesus for myself. Well, now I'm gonna walk the streets of glory one of these days. You know that I'm gonna walk the streets of glory one of these days. Hallelujah. One of these days, 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 one of be long. One of these days and it won't be long. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I heard Brother Brother Eastman say this morning, he said, seems like in the 60s, said you heard the second coming of the Lord preached about all the time. Said you couldn't get past it he said it seemed like he heard it all the time and he said he thinks that because uh 20 years had happened i think he was a little off but you know you know you get stuck in a point of time there in your life he said because 20 years later it hadn't happened well it's 50 or 60 years later now it hadn't happened that that maybe people have slacked off but he's coming soon we're gonna see him I'm going to get to see Jesus face to face. Praise the Lord. That's exciting. 
It's not something to be fearful about, children. We've got an advocate with the Father. We are adopted into the family of God. Uh, he is. We are one of many brethren, the Bible says. Praise God. We've got that to look forward to. Jesus is coming soon. Hallelujah. You can be seated this morning. Thankful for what we're feeling in the house of the Lord. Amen. We have had about, I don't know, six services of just liberty. And I'm so thankful. It gets, it gets hard preaching when you feel like you're pulling uh, a, serve, uh, a train, rather. And uh, man, it's been easy. And I'm thankful for that. Today might change it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for what we feel today. Let's give him a good praise and clap of praise this morning. I don't know if there's anything I'd rather be doing when that trumpet sounds than praising the Lord. Wouldn't that be about the best thing you could be doing when that trumpet sounds? Just, man, I, I, it'd be wonderful, wouldn't it, if he come back on a Sunday morning when we're all gathered in here and we can just go on up with our family in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward. Looking forward to seeing him. Hallelujah. Oh, I want to see him and look upon his face. Hallelujah. There's nothing, nothing I want more than to see Jesus face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Man, praise the Lord. He is good. He is good. His mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Grab your Bibles. The Lord has redirected my bark this morning. And this is terrifying to me. There are great preachers that can do this at the drop of a hat. And I am not one of them. But I want to preach out of Esther this morning a few portions of Scripture. Praise the Lord. Thank you for helping me, Link. Hold down the holy desk up here. Esther, and we're going to read in a few portions of Scripture here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I have a start, and that's all I got. But we're going to preach what I feel on my heart uh, to preach. I feel redirected, if you'll allow me to say it that way. And we'll read in Esther. We'll start in chapter number 2. I'd say everyone in here is very familiar with this portion of Scripture. It is something that we uh, often have been taught in uh, Sunday school. You uh, children's church teachers in here, you have taught this, no doubt, a lot. Uh, those of you that have taught Sunday school, taught your children uh, Bible stories at home, this is uh, just a beautiful, beautiful story and this is the thought I want to go with today, and I believe it is very relevant for these times, is I don't believe in coincidence. I don't believe in coincidence. Esther 2 and verse number 21, and then we'll skip um, to chapter 6 and, and chapter 7, but we'll read about the same amount of verses we usually read here this morning. Verse 21 of Esther 2, <clears throat> it says, In those days, while Mordecai sat in the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains, Bigthan and Teresh, of those which kept the door, <clears throat> man, were wrought and sought to lay hand on, on King Ahasuerus 
And the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it unto Esther, the queen. And Esther certified the king, therefore, Mordecai's name. And when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out. Therefore, they were both hanged on a tree. And it was written in the book of the Chronicles before the king. <clears throat> Esther chapter 6 now and verse number 1. Try not to spill my water this service, all right? <clears throat> Esther 6 and verse number 1. On that night could not the king sleep. And he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bigthana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, and the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand on the king, Ahasuerus, and the king said, What honor and dignity hath been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, There is nothing done for him. And the king said, Who is in the court? Now Haman was come into the outward court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. Let's skip to Esther chapter 7 now in verse number 1, and then we'll read verse number 10. This is for sake of brevity, not, uh, not trying to shoehorn Scripture into a thought today. Verse number 1, So the king and Haman came to banquet with Esther the queen. Verse number 10, this is where we'll end uh, our reading today. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for his word. Lord, I need your help this morning. I need the power of the Holy Ghost to sweep by and uphold me, God. Uh, you know, Lord, you know. I pray, God, that I would preach with fire from on high, that the truth of your word would come from my lips, God, that I would not add to nor take away. God, I pray that you would deal with the hearts of men and women, boys and girls, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I do not believe in coincidence. I do not believe in coincidence. Praise the Lord. The story of Esther is a beautiful story uh, of a woman that was used by God. And I know, don't thank me, uh, sexist here this morning, but I want to focus on Mordecai for the most part, her uh, uncle that sat at the king's gate. Uh, this is something that is such a precious story as I read through it a, a, about a month ago, and I just pinned down what I'm about to, what I have on this paper really quickly, pinned down some notes uh, just to come back to it when I felt like preaching it. And this morning during prayer, I felt it and I, I resisted it a little bit because it wasn't as fleshed out as I would want. And then then during song service, I just felt it uh, come back to me in a way that I, I feel like I should obey what I'm feeling here today. It is a beautiful story of God taking and preserving his people by placing two people in places where God would be able to use them in such a magnificent way. In such a magnificent way. There, there is something so powerful about what God can do with one person. The story of David illustrates that, illustrates that beautifully. Uh, he was not thought of well by those around him. Even his own father had delayed in bringing him to see what his father and no doubt Samuel thought because we we read of Samuel's thoughts. We can see what they thought of the first man. How, how this must be the man. This one must be the man. And, and, and God chooses a young boy that uh, was forgotten an afterthought in the pastures of his father. 
and God uses him uh, to defeat an enemy that even the most, uh, the biggest man, Saul, King Saul, head and shoulders above the people in the kingdom, even the best warriors of their land were afraid to face. But God saw potential in one person and brought him to that, that day to that place. I don't believe in coincidence. There is, there is so much in the Word of God how Joseph uh, was hated by his brethren. He was given dreams. And, and, and he uh, maybe unwisely shared those dreams before time and maybe a little pompously shared them. But God orchestrated and moved in all of that. And, and the almighty alchemist is behind the scenes performing things that we know not of. And finally, Joseph stands before his brothers in a time of famine and saves their life. I don't believe in coincidence. I don't believe in coincidence. Uh, you might get sick of that statement here this morning. We could read through the Bible and find what God could do with one person that were given over to him and God used them in a mighty way. And God used situations that seemed horrible and horrific, but God turned them around and fit them right into his plan. Uh, there, there is something about this. In chapter 2 of Esther, what we read today, uh, there, there is nothing in this world that could convince me that it was just a coincidence that Mordecai, that verse 22, and the thing was known to Mordecai. Nothing on this earth could convince me that that was just happen chance, that that was just fortune, uh, that was just coincidence. No, that was not coincidence, that was providence. God brought it to pass, all right? He was sitting there listening to an unsafe conversation that two men were having that if they were smart, they wouldn't have had out there. But God had a plan. Praise the Lord. I'm feeling my helper now. God had a plan. That unsafe conversation was made known to Mordecai. And because of his relationship with the, uh, the queen, he shared it with her. She shared it with the king. And the king wrote it down or they uh, rather they found out it to be true and they chronicled it uh, in the book of the Chronicles before the king. Somehow he forgot there was an unsafe conversation. But then secondly, in chapter number six, there was an uncomfortable night. I don't believe in coincidence, Brother Mike. I know you just had an uncomfortable night the other night. But I don't believe in coincidence. It wasn't the pizza he ate before bed that kept him up. I don't believe it was coincidence. Uh, he sat up and he could not sleep. He had an uncomfortable night. And, and he had one of his scribes go and get him the book of the Chronicles of him, the king there. And he had them read it. And somehow, though no doubt many things had happened, they read the part where Mordecai had, had tattled on those two men and had saved the king's life. It was no coincidence that he had that sleepless night because God knew that in the morning there was a man coming to, to take Mordecai down who was the advisor of the queen who gave her strength, who challenged her to stand up against the wickedness of the government in that time. He was saying, hey, God had an intended a outcome that he was orchestrating and bringing about. Praise God for Mordecai's obedience. Praise God for providence that brought it. Now Haman was come. It says even during the night, he said, which one of my courtiers are out there? And they said, well, Haman's out there to bring news that, hey, I want this man who will not pay obeisance to me, who will not bow because he says he only bows to the one true God. I want him 
to die. I built a gallows that was ridiculously tall so everybody around could see his legs twitch after he dropped to the bottom of that rope. But God had an, an, an intended uh, an outcome for this situation. You see, there was the unintended gallows, but then there was the unexpected outcome. So they hanged Haman on that, that feast that was invited by Esther for Haman and, and the king to come to. He, he gave her, uh, the king gave her the, the edge uh, or that, 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 the stretch of that rod that it indicated she was forgiven for coming into his presence without being invited. And he, he, she invited him. They go and have it. And then she lets him know the plan. I don't believe in coincidence. Do you understand? I hope what I'm saying this morning, I've said it over and over again, what we're going through. I don't believe that God can't use it as part of his plan. God is working in ways that we cannot see, in, in ways that are above our ways. I don't understand what he's doing, but I don't believe in coincidence. I don't believe in coincidence. I tried to tell this story the other day and I messed it up horribly and I looked it up. That tends to go how, how I do after I preach. I look up things that came to the top of my head to make sure I didn't lie or I didn't mess it up on accident. George Washington, he, he said in that, uh, when he was the, the, our country was still part of the British Empire, he went out, I believe it was with General Braddock, I, I, can't, I can't remember that part. But he said that as they were going and that arrogant English officer would not yield to say, hey, they don't fight like they do in Europe. They use their brains over here. They hide behind stuff while they're shooting at you instead of going out in the field. And, and, and he wouldn't hear him. He said, no, we're not doing it. The Redcoats are out there in the middle of the wilderness. They got their hunting orange on trying to get shot, I guess. And they go out there, and they set out the, the 1,100 soldiers. Uh, the, the seven or 800 of them were English, that only 30 were left at the end of that battle. And George Washington leading the 300 militiamen from here, uh, they, they, and from Virginia, he said that, that uh, they were so despised by the English general that they had, he had pushed them to the back. And he didn't want them up in the front. And they were praising God for that after that battle. But they said General Washington was riding through after uh, three horses had been shot from under the English general. And finally he had been shot in the side. And General Washington takes over. And he's riding one of the British men that made it. said, I was watching General Washington. And I was expecting any moment for him to be shot off of the horse. Because that's who they were aiming at was the officers on, on, on mounts there. They were aiming at them. And he said he, he got a, a couple horses shot out from under him. He said, I, this is George Washington, a quote about that battle. He said, by the all-powerful dispensations of providence. Man, he, he spoke fancy, didn't he? I have been protected beyond all human probability or expectation. For I had four bullets through my coat and two horses shot under me, yet escaped unhurt, although death was leveling my companions on every side of me. I don't believe in coincidence. I believe in providence. I don't believe that we are just coasting through life and a butterfly's wing flap on the other side of the earth causes a wind that starts and moves across the earth and builds up steam until we are thrown off course a little bit. No, God, just like I preached last Sunday, God knows the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. God knows our road Hallelujah. Mordecai I wasn't in the gate that morning by accident. God had a plan. Esther wasn't the king's type because of her genes. God had a plan. The king didn't experience insomnia because of heartburn. God had a plan. And Haman didn't come up for the inspiration to build the gallows for Mordecai. God had a plan. God knew that there was a wicked king that 
that would be flattered and, and give forth a decree that the Jews should be killed. And he put his signet on it, knowing that, not knowing that it would wipe them out. But God had a girl that he had prepared with beauty. He had prepared her with grace. He, she, he had prepared her with an uncle that knew the ways of God and that would encourage her to follow the ways of God. I'm telling you this morning, God has a plan for your life. He has a plan for your life. You think about that. You think about that. The way we look, it seems so well, I look like my dad. Everybody tells me that. I look like a taller version of my dad. We got the same hat size, Brother Brandon, seven and three quarters, unless I get a nice tight haircut like this, and I might can squeeze into a seven and a half. That's a big hat size, all right? It's like an NFL football player. We got the same big old head. We got the same look. We got the same forehead. I talk like him. I use my hands when I talk. I can't help it. It's in my genes. But God knows the way that we take even everyday mundane things. God knows and he can use it for his glory for his glory man to come to the piano if you will I'd be glad you came to church this morning hallelujah I do not believe in coincidence I don't believe that God is surprised by what's going on in our lives not on a national or worldwide level and not on the individual level. God is not surprised. Sister Debbie, I was thinking about that last year that you had. That tough year that you had. But God wasn't surprised by any of that. That comforts me. That God knows the way that we take. He knows the way that we take. Whether sickness, whether weakness in our body, the loss of family that means so much to us, uh, the isolation that has come with this devastating time, whether the economy being affected and it affecting our livelihoods, God knows all about it. And I'm telling you, through the Word of God, through the life of Israel, the life of the early Christians, we can see that God saw what was happening for His people. Why? Sometimes we pray and we say, God, take this away from us. Lord, don't make us uh, uh, go through what we're going through. And, and then I look at what Paul went through. Why didn't God just have him be able to pass through those men that held those rocks? Uh, I, don't, I forget the place where he was at, the town that he was at, when they stoned him and they thought he was dead, just laying there. Why didn't God just stop their arm? Stop the stones. Why didn't he do that? I don't know. I know we have the report of Paul shaking himself off, getting up, going back into the city, getting some rest, and heading back out on a missionary journey. Why did he allow Peter to be arrested? Why did the church have to pray and be surprised? Why did that happen? Why, why didn't he just stop it from happening? Why didn't he, you know, I don't understand the ways of God. But here's one thing I do understand, that he knows the way I take. I find such comfort in that this morning, that God understands, God cares, and God is at, on, at work on our behalf. Stand with me if you will. There's a man that came up to Paul. The book of Acts. And... Paul was witnessing to a deputy in the Roman government, Sergius Paulus, I believe his name was. Elemis. Elemis, the sorcerer, who was an advisor of Sergius Paulus, came up and he tried to blind the deputy from hearing the word of God that day. And if we were in that situation, we're witnessing to somebody, and I've been there before, been witnessing to somebody. Brother Brandon, we were in the county line electric or country line, whatever it's called. There, we were witnessing to that one boy, that worker in there. And, and somebody came and cut it off on purpose. They didn't like that we were talking about Jesus. And they came and cut it off on purpose. And you know, sometimes we're so affected by that. But Paul, 
he rose up in that, in that time when that man tried to blind, the Bible says, tried to blind him from the faith. He, he came, God came through the apostle Paul. The Bible says that Paul spoke blindness into that man's life and he was blinded, had to be led away and he experienced blindness. What he was trying to do spiritually to one man, God did to him physically. And Paul knew, hey, though the adversary against me rages, God can move even in the adversary and he can create a better witness than I could ever be. This morning, I want to encourage you that we don't believe in coincidence. I don't say, well, it's fortunate. No, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. God has blessed me. I don't, I don't depend on fortune. I don't depend on karma. I am blessed by the God that created this world. That's who we serve. So this morning, that God that we serve, He's at work in our lives. God, I pray that you would take this feeble, feeble attempt, Lord. And God, that you would, by your Holy Ghost, move into our hearts, Lord. Encourage us, Lord, to understand, God, that you have an Esther for this time. You have a Mordecai for this time. You even have a Haman that's trying to build a gallows to kill the people of God during this time. But God, we can stand on the truth and we cannot be shaken because Lord, you prepared for such a time as this. God, you you placed a person for such a time as this. And though there is uncertainty all around and fear seems to come in waves, God, you're in control. You're still the rock of ages. We move this morning in the name of Jesus. I give you praise and honor. I give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. There are four places up here. We're doing first come, first serve for the altars. I invite you to a place of prayer. I invite you to spend time with the Lord. If you don't come up here, that's all right. Spend some time with the Lord where you're at. But God wants to speak to you this morning. He wants to encourage you to do better. He wants to encourage you to have more faith. You can depend on the Lord in the name of Jesus.